So we have seen the reflex actions. Reflex actions help the organisms to protect themselves from dangerous stimuli and to produce quick responses in case of different stimuli. So when an organism is able to produce a response without any brain, then what is the necessity of brain? You see the lower forms of organisms, different animals. If you see the lower phylums, Annelida, Arthropoda, in these cases, even though they don't have very well developed complex brain and all, even though they don't have well developed complex nervous system, they're able to produce the reflex action so quickly, isn't it? If you try to catch a cockroach, any insect, it escapes so quickly from your hands. It is not easily caught by you. That means its reflex action system is very quick and very effectively responding. So this reflex actions, whatever are there in these lower level of organisms, they are evolved. So we are evolved, most evolved organism, human beings. Even though we have the basic reflexes like other smaller animals, we have some complex nervous tissue is evolved into brain, a complex organ, which can do more than the reflex actions. So reflex actions, they are up to a certain thing. But beyond that, something can be done by the nervous system. Animals, lower forms of animals, they can produce reflexes and protect themselves. But if you see the higher animals like human beings, we have that uh, intellectual power, intelligence. So we are the intelligent animals in the animal kingdom. We are able to think, we are able to memorize, we are able to learn, we are able to produce, create something, we are able to uh, put our ideas. So all this is happens in human beings. This is all possible because of the complex organ, human brain. So if you see the evolution of the nervous system in different organisms, then if you see the human beings, they have the most well-developed and complicated nervous system. Here the most important organ is the brain. If you see the classification of nervous system in human beings, the nervous system is basically categorized into two parts, CNS and PNS. What this CNS stands for? Central nervous system. And what is this PNS, peripheral nervous system? What is central nervous system? What does it comprise of? The central nervous system is made up of two organs. Those are the brain and the spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord together comprise the central nervous system. Central nervous system is just like a CPU of a computer. You are using a desktop or a laptop. It will be having a CPU central processing unit. In the same way, in our body, the processing of various information data, the sense whatever the stimuli, whatever the changes in the environment and whatever, so it is processed in our central nervous system. That is the brain and spinal cord. What is peripheral nervous system? The brain and spinal cord are connected to different body parts through the peripheral nervous system. Again, the peripheral nervous system, PNS, is divided to two. One is cranial nervous system and the other one is spinal nerves. Here we can see the picture of brain and spinal cord. Spinal cord is the extension of the brain. So this brain and spinal cord, these two together called central nervous system. And we can see some nerves arising from the brain. We call them as cranial nerves. And we see some nerves arising from the spinal cord to the peripheral sides. We call them as spinal nerves. So this cranial and spinal nerves together, they constitute the peripheral nervous system. So this is the uh, categorization, classification of the nervous system. So now we are at this point. In the central nervous system, we are at the point of brain. So what is this brain? What is its function? What are the various parts of it? Let us see. Brain is an organ, important organ of the nervous system, which is made up of very soft tissue, which comprises a lot of water. Most of our brain is made up of water. It is very sensitive and delicate organ. As it is very sensitive, very delicate, very important, it has to be well protected. See. The delicate organs and important organs of our body are well protected by the 
skeletal system you see your heart and lungs are protected by the rib cage in your chest cavity as they are very sensitive delicate as well as very important organs in the same way the brain is also very delicate sensitive important complex organ it is protected in a hard bony skull called as cranium so cranium is a hard bony skull it is made up of some bones which do not have any joints all the bones are fixed together so it is like a shell which gives protection to the blows something may fall on of your head or you may fall down and hit something so in such cases the cranium it gives protection to the brain so cranium is also called as skull inside the cranium here the brain is embedded the brain is again covered by some layers membranes so here there are some membranes that are surrounding the brain above the membranes there is a cranium these membranes are filled with some fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid so this cerebrospinal fluid it gives nourishment protection to the brain so this is how the brain is protected and this is the place where the brain is located now let us see what are the parts of the brain the brain is mainly divided into three parts according to the functions they carry out actually what are the functions of brain so we already discussed that we have some extra abilities when compared to other organisms other animals what are those we have intelligence we have different sensors different uh, centers in our brain to receive the different information to read the different information so the brain it consists of different centers to identify the colors to recognize the colors to recognize the smells to recognize the different odors or flavors to recognize different tastes to appreciate the aesthetic beauty to appreciate the music so we have different centers to listen the sounds understand the sounds analyze the sounds so this is all done in this part of the brain which we call it as fore brain so this is the upper part of the brain which mainly consists of cerebrum is called as fore brain the fore brain consists of cerebrum so here it has got various centers auditory center olfactory center for reception of smell auditory center for reception of sounds so all this so here you our sense organs are connected to these centers where the changes in the environment are analyzed and understood there and fore brain is the place where the memory the information is stored in our brain we can memorize many things you have to memorize your answers questions and different things formulae definitions all these things for your examination this is all done in your fore brain where the information is data is stored in that and you can get back the data not only storing the information your brain your fore brain has got another capability that is logical thinking problem solving so you have some question in your mind so you are thinking of the question for a long time you are doing some kind of experiments based on that question or you are doing some kind of research you are referring something there you may relate so many things what you have referred and finally you may come to a conclusion that means you are coming you are finding a solution to your problem that is the ability of your brain so you have intelligence you have application of the knowledge the learned knowledge whatever the basic things we learn in our daily life or in your classroom or in your laboratory you may apply these things at some other place to solve a problem that is all done by the brain now here which part of the brain is responsible for all this is the fore brain or the cerebrum so here we have learned that the fore brain is the part of the brain which is the major center for reception of various information that is the hearing sensing of smell and the sight all these are associated to this fore brain here it has got a special part to identify your hunger and feeling full 
so by that you can decide whether to stop eating or eat more so this is all happens in the forebrain now if it is the those are the functions of the forebrain then what does this midbrain and hindbrain does if you look at this picture you can see this major part here you can see so many folds in the brain just like our intestines do you know why these many folds are there in your brain because when there are folds a lot of surface can be fit into a small area so your brain has got so many nerve cells and all these nerve cells are fitted in a very small area because of these folds so folds they provide large surface area so here you can see so many folds in the cerebrum and this part of the brain is called as midbrain and you can see the midbrain its continuation with this particular part called as hindbrain so the brain is divided into three parts forebrain midbrain hindbrain so this hindbrain consists of pons medulla and cerebellum three parts are there let us see what is the function of this midbrain and this hindbrain the voluntary functions your consciousness your decisions your ideas your thoughts your appreciation your enjoyment everything is there in the forebrain but so many things happen without your notice without your thinking without your decision you are conscious unconscious involuntary actions takes place in your body which are very essential which should happen continuously to keep you stay alive what are they your digestion you are not giving any instruction to your intestines to yes i have eaten an apple come on digest it you are not giving any instruction automatically the apple is digested who is controlling that you are not always telling your heart to come on beat beat no you are not giving any instructions to your heart but it is instructed it is controlled that is done involuntarily so this way in your body many activities are involuntary many movements are involuntary so these involuntary movements are controlled by the midbrain and hindbrain they take up the control of these involuntary functions certain activities in our body like blood pressure control of blood pressure salivation vomiting if something goes wrong into your throat you vomit it so that vomiting all these are controlled by this medulla medulla is a part of the hind brain medulla controls those vomiting salivation blood pressure so all these involuntary functions are controlled by the midbrain and this hind brain what does this cerebellum does the cerebellum does it helps in maintaining a balance in your posture we are able to maintain a balance in our posture it is because of the cerebellum right so if you know physics well how we are able to stand we are keeping our body to the center of gravity we are bringing the center of gravity to the center of our body always by making the weight adjustment otherwise we may fall down but who is making this balance who is adjusting your body parts according to their weight equally on both sides not to make you fall you may give different postures while dancing while playing while fighting while jumping even then you are not falling your body weight is adjusted all the times equally on both sides of the point center of gravity so by that that is maintained by whom that is nothing but the cerebellum it maintains the posture of your body means you are able to balance your body because of the cerebellum if there is any defect with the cerebellum if it does not function properly you lose your balance it all happens when you wake up suddenly from sleep your cerebellum is not totally active so you may be falling like this and you may not be able to control your posture so when you sleep on upstairs on terraces if you wake up suddenly do not walk quickly just stay calm for some time let your brain completely activated then you can come down from the terraces otherwise there may be a chance of falling from the steps or from the ceiling that is from that slab so it is very 
useful in controlling, in maintaining the balance or the posture of the body. Sometimes it loses the balance when the person is drunkard, cerebellum is affected, the person is not able to maintain the balance. So you may, you might have seen the drunkards, the over drunken people walking on the roads, losing their control, their bodies are not controlled, their postures are not controlled. So not balanced. So that is what done by the cerebellum. So involuntary functions of our body, the regular activities which carries on even though you sleep, you take rest, your conscience is at rest. But your heartbeat is going on, your breathing is going on, your blood pressure is maintained. All this happens even though when you sleep. So that is controlled by these parts. So you can see the various parts of the brain and taking the various kinds of responsibilities that is to control the movements of your muscles. So when there is no control on the movement of the muscles, you cannot maintain any posture, you cannot maintain anything even though you cannot speak. When you are speaking, the muscles in your tongue, the muscles in your jaws, the muscles in your lips and cheeks all must be coordinated. Otherwise, you are not able to produce a sound. And at the same time, the, mus the muscles which are there in the vocal cords, they should be contracted and relaxed. So that is also should be controlled. If movements are not controlled well, you are not able to execute any action. You might have seen the damage to the nerves happened in certain cases like people who are paralyzed. If you see a person suffering from paralysis, paralyzed body parts, if any of the side, either left side or right, uh, right side is paralyzed, you can see they are not able to produce any kind of movements in their body parts. So it is very pathetic condition. So that is, that shows us the importance of the nervous system. We are able to live so comfortably, we are able to defend ourselves, we are able to protect ourselves. We are able to do various activities, physical activities, movements, movement in our bodies, movement from one place to another place. This is all achieved by controlling the various muscles. Movements are controlled by the nervous system. So, in this lesson, we have learned the point that movements in animals are controlled by the nervous system. Nervous system is made up of central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system is made up of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. This is what we have learned. And we learned one more important thing. In many cases, to produce a response to a stimuli, to make the responses quick, instead of taking the information to the brain for analysis, spinal cord takes the decision itself. Such responses are very quick. Such quick responses are called as reflexes. And the part which involves in taking a reflex action is called as reflex arc. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.